everybody and welcome to a very long overdue N64 Magazine Time Capsule Episode 6. This has been a long time coming, so those of you that may be new to my channel will maybe not know too much about this show. Basically this is a show where we go through the history of the N64 Magazine, which was a great magazine here in the UK, and it was released around different parts of the world as well, and we go through each of the pages in the magazine issues in order and basically take a look back at the N64. These issues are packed with all the histories about development of games, games which are cancelled, even products which are cancelled like the N64 DD. Now this show wouldn't be possible without the help from the guys over at the Out of Print Archive. They actually scan all of the pages which I use in these episodes and in the link in the description below you can go to their website and you can download full issues of their magazines and it's not just this magazine, the N64 magazine, they've got many different magazines as well so if you haven't been to their website already do go over and check them out. Now before we delve into this issue there is a little bit of housekeeping that I need to take care of and that is to announce the winner of the $100 cash prize contest that I started way back in the middle of May. For those of you that don't know, I also make games, so I've got one of my games on the iOS App Store which is called Rapture Runner, um, but basically I made this game, I put it up on the App Store and then I offered a £100 cash, $100 cash prize to the person that posted the highest score over my Facebook page by the 30th of June. I'm pleased to announce that the winner and the person that posted an incredible score is Kev the Retro Game Crusader, so congratulations to you Kev, you have won the $100 cash prize. To those of you that are still wanting to win other prizes, stay tuned until the end of this episode. With that being said, let's open up this issue, number 6 of N64 Magazine Time Capsule. This issue has one of my favourite covers for the magazine so far. Slapping Link and anything to do with Zelda 64 in the title was a surefire way to shift issues, and the bright colours really catch the eye. Inside this issue is all the latest information on Zelda 64, Mother 3, Goemon 5 and Holy Magic Century or Quest 64 if you're in the States. This month's guide is a how to get the perfect scores on pilot wings and two of the newest sports games to hit the UK go head to head. The back cover to the left has a nice Mario Kart 64 advert and also details about the other awesome content inside. Opening up the magazine reveals an advert to the left but as always Jonathan Davies who is the editor for the magazine writes a nice intro. He talks about how much he hated RPGs until he played Zelda on the Super Nintendo. He talks about how excited he is with the lineup of RPGs on the N64 and also about Mario Kart 64 Championship the magazine is running. Funnily, a copy of Goemon 5 has just arrived from Japan and he talks about how bizarre the game over screen is. Anyone who's played the game will know what he means. The N64 magazine 10 Commandments is also here ever present and considering how much negativity my N64 Japsize series has gotten, I'll skip casually offensive jokes this time. The contents page is as you'd expect, but have a read of the Team 64 section to the right. Due to the hot weather, the team have come up with ideas for how to use a hay fever stick in comedic ways. They also choose their favourite games of the month, and it's no surprise that Mario Kart 64 gets the most votes. One of my favourite N64 games gets a mini preview here after having become one of the most eagerly awaited N64 titles after a fantastic showing at E3. DMA Design in Dundee fill in the magazine on how the idea for the game came about and about how much praise the team puts on the N64 hardware for making their job easier. At this point, Space Station Silicon Valley was around 75% complete and people who had played the game at E3 this year were praising it for its originality and excellent controls. If you haven't played this already, then basically put down this issue, pause the video and go play it and you'll quickly realise it's one of the most unique games on the console. SATA's doomed N64 racer Rev Limit is previewed here. The developers say the game is around 75% complete and the N64 magazine say they are surprised that there are still no playable versions of the game available. The developers talk about why they were not going to implement the rumble pack in the game and discuss why the game is different than Ridge Racer despite the media saying that they are very similar. Duke Nukem 64 is up next for a preview and the magazine writes about the differences from the PC version which was a mega hit. As Nintendo was censoring games as usual, you couldn't kill the cheerleaders and there were no naked lap dancers in this version of the game. However, they added more levels, guns and enhanced graphics. The game also featured a 4 player deathmatch and the magazine seemed to praise the game 
but said that Rare would not be losing any sleep over its graphics. The first part of Planet 64 this month covers the news that Namco have finally tipped their hat into the N64 and are developing games for the console. Whilst the first title they would release on the console was a baseball game which would most likely never come to the UK, it was still a sign that third party publishers were starting to see the N64 as a genuine revenue stream and Nintendo were also dropping costs for third party developers. The claim also responded to a bug in Turk when using third party memory cards. In the second part of Planet 64 are reviews of N64 accessories and the news that due to Star Fox being copyright here in Europe, the game's name will be changed to Lilac Wars. I never liked this name to be honest and Nintendo have ended up in the same position they were in when they had to rename Star Fox on the Super Nintendo to Star Wing here in the UK. There is also news that the Rumble Pack will cost £15 when sold separately and to the right is Retro Corner where as always classic items and games are reviewed. Coming soon has some awesome games this issue. Poyo Poyo Sun 64 is an N64 update of the awesome puzzle series. It's basically Mean Bean Machine from the Sega Mega Drive and Kirby's Ghost Trap combined, however this was likely not going to get a western release. Turok 2 is also confirmed as being 4 months into development, so the latest news on its progress is here, and also Forsaken by Acclaim is looking promising. Shadow Man is the star of the show here, and whilst they have no in-game shots, they do have some insights into the game and some artwork to show how the game will look. And after some great games come the poor ones. Wild Choppers is mentioned here, and even the developers say the controls will take a lot of getting used to. There is also a look at Madden 64, which as we know is not a great American football game. To the right is Bomberman 64, which is not actually a bad game, and the magazine talks about how fun the multiplayer was at E3 and the interesting look of the solo player campaign. Rounding off coming soon are two racing games. San Francisco Rush gets covered and the article talks about how important hidden routes will be in the game and the controls which are a lot better than most of the other N64 racers they have played. Lamborghini 64 took a pacing at E3 due to its overly sensitive controls and so the news here is that it's being tweaked before launch and the track variety is also being worked on. An ear to the ground rounds up the rumour mill and WWF 98 is in production by Acclaim and they promise it will be the definitive wrestling simulation game. IDOS also confirmed they are working on 6 N64 titles and Acclaim confirmed that they are working on a version of Magic the Gathering for the N64 which surprised many as they were wanting to improve their general image. Game Japan is also centred around Namco announcing their baseball game and how excitement for it reaching fever pitch in Japan. There is also an article about how cameras have become hip again in Japan and the Rumble Pack enhanced versions of Mario 64 and Wave Racer 64 being released. Those who buy both games at the same time will also receive a free paper fan in Japan. To the right is some interesting stories about accessories and new game store openings in Tokyo. An Englishman in Tokyo covers how unimpressed he is with the N64 responding to the lack of N64 games by re-releasing the Rumble enhanced titles. He also talks about how many Westerners have misconceptions about how life in Japan is and he also takes a look at the latest controllers by Hudson and the fact that they cost around £13 each which is great value. There is also a little Japanese lesson in the orange box for those who would like lessons and to the right you can see a nice advert which is fun to look at to see just how much game prices have changed. Now let's crack into the articles you've been waiting for. This issue was touted as being an RPG special in the last issue and so without any further hesitation let's jump into the latest N64 RPG news. Zelda 64 is up first and this is a fascinating look at the game. After seeing some awesome videos at E3, Nintendo have been holding back a lot of information and screenshots. The article talks a lot about how they have been told the game will play, but Nintendo have yet to confirm anything about the story and even the game's title at this point. To the right, Fusoya talks about his worries that the game might simply be generic and fall in line with other similar games turning 2D classics into 3D mediocre games. Despite this, he still gives the game a 9 out of 10 rating for his anticipation and the camera methods used in the game are also discussed. Holy Magic Century is praised for its graphics and the N64 magazine team have now been able to play a more complete version of the game which they say is very promising. They also talk about the nice character design and how it improves that you don't need to be a developer as big as Nintendo in order to make a great game. Fusoya talks about how the story is quite generic 
but as he was more intrigued rather than impressed with the game, he gave it a 7 out of 10 for his anticipation rating. Mother 3 is up now, and already worrying is the fact that they have reused screenshots of the game which they have previously used. The magazine talked to Hal, who advised the game will be a launch title for the N64DD and will use the new power of the console add-on in unique ways. They also talk about the game's setting and the story behind it. They also say that the game will be around 60 to 80 hours to play through and that's with knowing where you are going. Fusoya says that the game could be a game changer for the genre and his only concern is that it may be too bizarre for many gamers who aren't used to the stories and the themes in the game. He gives it an 8 out of 10 for his anticipation rating. Speaking of bizarre, Goemon 5 had just been released in Japan at the time of this issue going to press and the reviews have been very favourable. The game is confirmed as getting a western release and the magazine says that it's one of the most important games to hit the system so far but they are quite concerned with how well it will be received after the Super Nintendo game didn't do too well over here due to its quite poor translation and very Japanese style and humour. Fusoya echoes the same points and for that reason he only gives it a 6 out of 10 for his anticipation rating. Wrapping up the coverage of the N64 RPG scene is a look at the possibility of many of the N64 announced RPGs getting N64 DD support. The magazine comes up with ways in which it could add this feature to the games and they ask the developers of the announced games if they will be using the N64DD add-on. To the right hand side, readers have sent in RPG related questions to Fusoya, which he kindly answers and gives his opinions on the possibility of some of these SNES classics being remade for the console. After this quick break, we will be back with Arena where we will have reviews of Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey, NBA Hangtime, Star Fox 64 and the Rumble Pack enhanced versions of Mario 64 and Wave Race 64. Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey is reviewed here and before we go any further I will point out that in England we've never really been a big huge NHL or hockey market and so this was likely to never receive a high score as perhaps a football game would have. However the writers do state that they would much prefer the idea of playing this over some of the other North American sports games and as such they heap loads of praise onto the tight controls of the N64 analog stick and advise it gives you a new feeling of freedom that couldn't be found in any of these 16-bit hockey games. On the flip side, they mention that apart from the controls, the gameplay is more or less identical to what you'd find on a 16-bit console. They say that the graphics are good, but Konami will have a more polished looking game, and they also felt the sound was quite poor and dull. The writers loved the fact that the fights were now in 3D and they enjoyed playing the game as much as they expected for a hockey game. They gave the game 75% saying that a score of over 70% for a North American sports game was a respectable score. For those who like hockey games then you'll most likely give this a higher score. In the second of the UK reviews this month is another North American sports game in the form of NBA Hangtime. This is not a pretty game by any means. The writers absolutely slate the game as being nothing more than a god-awful hash of the arcade machine. They despise the lack of true 3D graphics, the lack of analog stick control and the fact that your opponents suddenly get very good when you take the lead. They do mention that they had a short period of pleasure in the game when playing it in 4 player mode but unless you have 3 other people to play with constantly then it's definitely a game to avoid. They gave the game a score of 52% which is one of the lowest scores for any game on the console at this point. This is a shame as NBA Hangtime in the arcade was a fun game but this is sadly not even a quality port of the arcade version. Import Arena is a story of two halves in this issue. The two Rumble Pack enhanced re-releases of N64 classics are reviewed. The Rumble enhancements to Mario 64 are described as being interesting but rather than enhancing the game they believe it would actually become annoying and many players would find that they would remove the rumble pack due to frustration. On the other hand, they loved the enhancements to Wave Race 64. They said the rumble pack enhancement adds to the game and helps you to race better as you can feel the differences when racing. This version of the game also added the ghost mode which wasn't present in the original. All in all, they loved both games but felt that I was already showing how and how not to add rumble pack enhancements into N64 games. The North American version of Star Fox 64 actually had the magazine staff worried. They loved the Japanese version so much they were worried that the translation was going to be full of awful cliches and poor writing. 
Luckily, they loved this version of the game, and although they felt that there were some cringeworthy lines of dialogue, they liked the game and felt that the voice actors were well suited to the characters in the game they were playing. They gave this North American release a 94% and said their only concern now was how the NTSC to PAL conversion would affect the game. With the Mario Kart 64 Championship well underway, Stage 1 is now complete, with some fantastic times already being set. For Stage 2, the magazine were asking people to send in video evidence of their laps as proof that they really did set those incredible times, rather than just photos of the race end screen they had previously asked for. Anyone who fancies themselves as a Mario Kart Pro should maybe have some fun trying to beat these scores. The guide to getting perfect scores on Pilot Wing 64 starts now, and whilst I'm not going to go into all of the tips shown, please remember that you can pause this video in HD mode and you should be able to see all of the text and tips very clearly. Alternatively, Pilot Wings was one of the first games I did a review of last year when I started my channel, so why not go back and watch it once you finish watching this episode. In true N64 magazine style, there is a brilliant spread here which delves into what your Mario Kart 64 character of choice says about your personality. If you've ever wondered what your character says about you, then this will no doubt make you chuckle. To the right hand side, they also choose some celebrities and tell you what character they would choose to play as in Mario Kart 64 and what it says about them. It's some light-hearted fun and these quirky articles are why I love this magazine so much. If you'd like to subscribe to N64 Magazine, sadly you're over a decade late, so this spread will be of absolutely no use to you. However, if you aren't a subscriber to my channel, then it, this won't cost you a penny. Ah oh yeah, that's a cheap shameless plug, but hey ho. N64 Hotline this issue has chosen Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey as their feature game and they give you all the tips and tricks as well as the cheats that you could possibly want to use. The N64 Hotline was actually a local rate number here in the UK and so there wasn't a premium rate cost involved if you called it back in the day. Of course this number is long gone, however if you've got any tips for the game then why not leave a comment below for everyone else to know about. Tips Extra is packed full of some great cheats. This issue are cheats for Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, Hexen and Dark Rift. To the right are readers tips where this issue they focus on secret shortcuts that you can find in Mario Kart 64. So if you've ever wondered how to shave seconds off your lap times then this is the place to look. Turning over is the start of the I am the best where readers would send in their high scores. Looking to the left however is an advert for Blade Runner the video game which funnily enough is one of my favourite games on any system of all time. This is probably one of the only times I'll ever mention a PC game on this channel, but hey, Blade Runner, I just couldn't resist. If you haven't played it yet, make sure you do, it's an incredible game. There are some bloody great letters in this issue, which as you'll know, this is one of my favourite sections of the magazine each issue. My personal favourite is one where a young boy is written in complaining about his parents, telling him to stop playing N64, and the magazine staff reply saying that he's basically drawn the short straw in the parents department. Dream On also has some imaginative game ideas such as Mario Boat 64 and Giver 64. There is also a new section called Invention Corner where a reader suggests a combined rumble pack and memory card which the magazine replies and informs him that they have actually just been given a prototype for this type of device by Daytel and also someone suggesting carts with 10 or more games on which are much cheaper to produce than standard game carts. And here is some more retro advertising. Huzzah! The director is next with all the previous issues in brief reviewed, with all the game schools also. Funnily, if you look in the bottom right hand corner, there's also a website of the month, which in this issue is the official Nintendo website, which is now one years old. Basically, it has very little English for the record. This month's featured article is again a joy to read and is one of the better written articles in the magazine. This issue they write about how nearly half of the N64 games so far have been updates of popular Super Nintendo classics and why there is a fascination with remaking 16-bit games. To celebrate this fact, they have delved back into the classic library and they've re-reviewed games which are considered classics on the Super Nintendo to see if they've stood the test of time now that people are playing 3D games. They also look at some of the best third party games from the Super Nintendo which are confirmed as getting N64 updates and look at how excited they are at the prospect of these becoming 3D games for Nintendo's latest console. Finally, they have a look at some Super Nintendo games which they want to place bets on to see if they'll get N64 releases. 
Funnily enough, they give Street Fighter Evens and Metroid 64 150 to one shot. To the right hand side, they also list 10 games they don't want to see remade for the N64, and funnily enough, some of these games actually went on to get made. And this brings us to the end of this issue of N64 Magazine, with one final page of adverts and a look at what will be covered in the next issue. That may be the end of this issue number 6 of N64 Magazine Time Capsule, but it's not the end of the video. Now if you're a regular viewer of this show, you will know that I have got a bit of a history of giving away prizes in each and every issue and every episode of the video. In this episode, I'm going to be giving you the opportunity to win a car of Hybrid Heaven for the N64 of course, and all you need to do is just hit like on the video and leave any comment below. Let me know what you liked about the video, what you thought about the contents inside it, and which games were featured that you liked the most. It's as simple as that. And then in time for the next issue of the magazine, time capsule review, I will be announcing the winner in that one. Until then, thanks for watching and take care.